many people felt the RMS Windsor Castle was the finest ship ever to serve Union Castle Line's UK to South African run. The Windsor Castle was not only the largest Union Castle liner, but the largest liner built by the Camel Laird Shipyard at Birkenhead, England. Located across the River Mercy from Liverpool, Camel Laird was awarded the Windsor Castle contract in the mid-1950s after Harland & Wolff, Union Castle's longtime shipbuilder, incurred expensive and embarrassing delays in completing the Pendennis Castle of 1958. Camel Laird may not have been the most famous UK shipyard, but it did produce many fine vessels, including the Cunard liner Mauritania of 1939. The keel of hull number 1287, affectionately nicknamed Miss Windsor, was laid down at number 6 Slipway on December 9, 1957. For 18 months, work on the ship's hull and machinery progressed. On June 23, 1959, the Windsor Castle was ready to be launched in a gala ceremony with Her Majesty the Queen Mother Elizabeth serving as the ship's godmother. Over 50,000 people attended the event, which was broadcast on television for millions more. A severe nosebleed that morning didn't delay the Queen Mother from performing the ceremony, which was precisely timed with the afternoon tide. After her short invocation, I named this ship Windsor Castle. May God bless her and all who sail in her. The Queen Mother sent a bottle of South African bubbly into the ship's bow, dousing herself in the process. The mighty hull gained momentum as it slid down the slipway into the River Mercy, where it was greeted with whistles and a cannon salute. For the next year, the building and fitting out process would continue. Marine architect John Lee's early renderings promised a spectacular looking ship. Those preliminary illustrations had more rounded and streamlined features, from the terracing of the forward decks to the ship's raked funnel. The finalized version of the ship was a bit more angular, but kept the same overall features. The Windsor Castle's towering midship superstructure was the latest evolution of a design first seen with the Orient Liner Orchides of 1948. Like the Windsor Castle, the Orchides, the 1951-built Oronce, and the 1954-built Orsova all featured glassed-in windscreens that gradually stepped up towards a towering midship's bridge and funnel. Union Castle's Pendennis Castle of 1958 borrowed elements of this look that were further evolved into the powerful-looking Windsor Castle's profile. Orient Line's Oriana of 1960 took the look a step further, and P&O's engines aft Canberra of 1961 may have been the ultimate ship to feature such a vertiginous bridge platform. The last ship to employ this look, the 1961-built Transvaal Castle, shown here in her second incarnation as the S.A. Val, was also the last passenger ship built for Union Castle Line, as well as the last of the early 1960s British superliners. At 37,647 gross tons, the Windsor Castle was one of the largest liners of her time, and the largest built in the UK since the Queen Elizabeth of 1940. At almost 784 by 94 feet, she carried 191 first and 591 tourist class passengers with a crew of 475. Her twin screws produced a 22.5 knot or 26 mile per hour service speed. The Windsor Castle was built for Union Castle's two class mail ship run from Southampton to Las Palmas, Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, East London, and Durban. 
The ship's interiors were the product of Jean Monroe, who also designed the Pendennis Castle, the Transvaal Castle, and the conversions of the Cunard liners Carmania and Franconia in 1963 and 64. Monroe, whose Le Style Anglais Decor was wildly popular at the time, was affectionately nicknamed the Queen of Chintz. She often stated that the Windsor Castle was her favorite commission. Although she was completed in June, the Windsor Castle's maiden voyage was delayed by strikes until August 18, 1960, when she departed Southampton at 2.36 p.m. Her master for that voyage was Commodore G.H. Mayhew, CBE, or Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. In addition to her complement of passengers, the Windsor Castle carried the Royal Mail and had 348,000 cubic feet of cargo space for a wide variety of cargo, from refrigerated goods to automobiles and livestock. The Windsor Castle's powerful looks were earmarked by no less than seven decks of superstructure. Passengers had access to eight decks, beginning at the top with bridge deck, where the first-class game space was sheltered by glass windscreens. Boat deck began with an open terrace overlooking the bow and promenades that led aft to the first-class children's playroom that overlooked the stern. The first-class lounge spanned the width of the next-level promenade deck with floor-to-ceiling windows that overlooked the bow. With elevated terraces on either side and a sunken dance floor, its main focal point was a Murano glass aviary by American artist Lynn Tissot. Directly after the lounge on the port side, the first-class smoking room was a favorite watering hole with its long bar and windows that looked out onto the port promenade. A small gymnasium was located aft of the smoking room. On the starboard side of promenade deck, the drawing room featured a marble fireplace and a portrait of the Queen Mother Elizabeth. The circular first-class card room followed on the starboard side. Its plaster ceiling and molding mimicked actual draperies. The ash-paneled first-class library followed the card room on the starboard side of promenade deck. The first-class Lido, also called the Veranda Cafe, featured a glass screen that opened onto the first-class pool area. It was especially popular when the weather grew warmer. At the far aft end of promenade deck, the first-class pool area featured sunning space and a games deck. The starboard side of the next level, A deck, was dedicated to the ship's finest accommodations, beginning with the Almond Blossom Suite. The Almond Blossom had two bathrooms, a walk-in closet, a living room, and a separate bedroom. With diverse names like Dragonfly, Peony, Sea Holly, and Green Leaves, 12 deluxe cabins followed the Almond Blossom suite. Each sported its own palette of colors and soft fittings. B Deck began with spacious first class cabins, nearly all of which were ocean views. C Deck also began with first class staterooms and the first class entrance, which was home to the shops, the beauty salon, and reception areas. More first class cabins led aft on C Deck to the cinema, which screened first run movies for both classes. The elegant first class dining room on D Deck was reached via a grand staircase and two lifts. Its main focal point was a painting of the Windsor Castle by Felix Kelly, a favorite artist of designer Jean Monroe. A private dining room on the port side could be reserved by guests for special events. Early Windsor Castle literature boasted that the fully air-conditioned tourist class, shown here in blue, spanned almost from stem to stern. A deck began with the sheltered tourist class games deck. Like the first class lounge, the tourist class lounge featured a sunken dance floor. 
It had a bar on its starboard side. While the starboard side of A-deck was dedicated to deluxe first-class accommodations, the port side was given over to tourist-class public rooms, beginning with the library and writing room. The tourist-class smoke room featured a trio of spaces. The center portion was a rotunda with an astrolabe hookah centerpiece and a ceiling featuring the Camello Pardellis constellation. Designed by future QE2 architect Michael Lynchbald, it led aft to a bar and lounge area. The sheltered tourist class dance deck followed, leading aft past the cargo hold to the tourist class veranda cafe, which opened onto the tourist class pool area. At the far aft end of A-deck, there was a tourist-class children's playroom. The aft portion of B-deck was dedicated to tourist-class accommodations, which had in-cabin sinks with restrooms and baths down the hall. The tourist-class entrance and more tourist-class staterooms were on aft C-deck. The tourist class dining room on D-Deck featured a long classical painted mural by Sidney Smith as its main focal point. More tourist class accommodations were located in the bowels of the ship on FD and E-Decks. The 1970s were a terrible time for traditional ocean liners like the Windsor Castle. The fuel crisis and the jumbo jet proved formidable foes. Also, with the containerization of cargo, the ship was further rendered outmoded and unprofitable. In September of 1977, the Windsor Castle departed Cape Town for the final time and was sold shortly after she arrived in Southampton. Her next owner was Greek shipping magnate John S. Latsis, who renamed her Margarita L. after one of his daughters. The largely unaltered liner sailed off to Saudi Arabia for use as an accommodation ship. In 1991, she was laid up in Greece, then finally sold for scrap in 2005. <laughs>